Good morning. Welcome to the Alabama Way. Uh, my name is Tricia Powell Crane. I'm the Executive Director of the Alabama School Connection and this is the uh, Get Connected segment. So it's nice to see you. We are very excited this morning to have with us Dan Stevens who is the Vice President of Community Impact for Education for uh, the Bold Goals Coalition of Central Alabama. So that was a lot of words. <laughs> we'll let Dan explain to us exactly what that is. Um, but this is a wonderful new effort um, to really work with schools to make what, we're, what, what is called collective impact on our schools using community resources. It's a fairly new effort, um, even though it's been sort of underway for a while, but we're just starting to see mm -hmm. some of this work happen in the community. So without further ado, Dan, welcome to the Alabama Way. Thank you, glad to be here. Thank you for being here. Um, I guess we could start first by maybe talking a little bit about what is bold goals. You, you, we hear it referred to as bold goals. We don't get the whole bold goals sure. coalition of central mm -hmm. Alabama all the time. But what is Bold Goals? Well, Bold Goals is a community coalition. It started a few years ago. Uh, the impetus for that was really within the United Way of Central Alabama Board of Directors and the leadership there. Mm -hmm. And they noticed that there are obviously significant community issues and there are a lot of different groups working on those issues. Mm -hmm. These are long-term regional challenges. Um, there are root causes to some of the things we've been working on a long time and so there was a lot of uh, urgency around how do we align the community to reach um, to address some of these challenges in ways that no one organization can do alone mm -hmm. that get to really the root causes of some of the major challenges in can, the community. Can I ask you when you say major challenges what to what are you referring? Are we talking about poverty? Are we talking about Poverty would be a great umbrella mm -hmm. for a lot of the work, but mm -hmm. we wanted to be more specific than that, okay. and the leadership wanted to be more specific than that. And really, they began to engage the community to determine what would those key areas be. And so through a series of community engagement sessions over a few years and mm -hmm. going to other communities around the country and seeing what was working, um, United Way brought together the community to decide on and. Uh, education, yeah. health, and financial stability as three areas where collective impact bring the community together to align around a common agenda and common measures of success in those areas mm -hmm. would really be helpful. Wow, and I know uh, in the spirit of full disclosure, I was in on a lot of those original meetings mm -hmm. as a spectator mostly, but I did get to provide some input um, mm -hmm. before the Alabama School Connection was formally organized. And um, it was a uh, really interesting to see the number of people in the room mm -hmm. and when you say engagement meetings I mean basically they were meetings where people stood at the front of the room and questions were asked mm -hmm. and we were asked to participate in um, telling things like what was important to mm -hmm. us right I mean where did we think the work needed to be done and there were people from all across every sector mm -hmm. their business uh, mm -hmm. education I remember seeing a lot of um, State Department people there sure. What, what kind of people were at these meetings? Well, all along, the effort has been to make this a cross-sector coalition. Mm -hmm. So that includes business, it includes nonprofits, it includes government agencies, and sometimes people who hold political office. Mm -hmm. um, it, it can include municipal governments, it can include uh, funders that are playing an important role, so public foundations, mm -hmm. um, corporate giving. Um, in addition to anyone else who really is working around that particular challenge that we may be addressing together. Wow. Okay, that's a that's a that's a big effort. <laughs> um, coordination has is very difficult when you're talking about. I would think it would be very difficult mm -hmm. when you're talking about people who are used to sort of doing things their own way. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to pull together people around a common agenda mm -hmm. um, and to look at very specific things that can be done. Talk to me a little bit about. Um, I know that Strive Together, mm -hmm. I think, was the group that introduced or, or brought forward some training and some help on mm -hmm. collective impact. Talk a little bit about Strive Together and collective impact. I, I was really fascinated with the work that they do in communities. Yeah, they do great work. And I may actually start a little bit backwards on that. I may talk Please about do. collective impact first and then talk about how Strive fits okay. with that. Collective impact is a movement that's been in place around the country in different communities and there really are five principles that are behind how that works. Okay. Um, the first is a common agenda. So the community aligns around common um, issues that we're going to address together okay. and draws some alignment there. Uh, the next will be shared measurement. So you agree upon the data that you will all track to 
hold yourselves accountable for results in the community and um, achieving the same outcomes together. So that's mm -hmm. another driver of alignment. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have the common agenda, shared measurement, uh, mutually reinforcing activities. Wow. So that means that when we align and different nonprofits and funders and businesses and government come together, we're all doing things that help drive the same issues, help drive the same solutions forward in whatever capacity we can bring to move wow. along those things. Uh, next would be continuous communication. So you do have to ensure that all the partners are talking to each other mm -hmm. because you can't coordinate and align without that. Right. Um, and the last principle is a backbone organization. And that's the role in our community that United Way of Central Alabama is okay. playing for the Bold Goals Coalition. Um, we don't own the coalition, but we provide the backbone administrative support that makes sure meetings happen, that minutes are documented, um, that reminders go out, that people are held to action commitments they make, and we make sure that the message reaches the community. Wow. Okay, so before you get to strive yeah. together, let me mention, I know you all have a wonderful website, boldgoals.org. We do. Um, that it sh highlights the work of all of the different areas. Mm -hmm. And there were there was even some great data, you know, I love data, mm -hmm. uh, some great data that the uh, Joe Adams from Parca had mm -hmm. helped develop to put on the website to show the kinds of things that you're measuring. We'll talk about mm -hmm. measurements a little later. But so the the idea of collective impact really, it's kind of an old-fashioned one, right? But we've kind of, again, we've all mm -hmm. gotten into our own silos sure. in a way. Um, I can remember being the naysayer at a meeting, mm -hmm. I think it was held at one of the local universities and saying, how are we going to get all these people to work together? Mm -hmm. You know, it seems a bit pie in the sky, but that is, you stand at the head of that mm -hmm. pretty much, right? I mean, you're coordinating mm -hmm. some of this communication and we the are. meetings. And we are. We play a leadership role in that way. And really our volunteers lead this, which okay. is one of the best things about it. We have two great co-chairs who are volunteers, okay. Bill Jones, who is a retired vice chairman of O'Neill right. Industries and a great community leader, and Dr. Phil Hammonds, who's a retired superintendent of the Jefferson County Schools, another right. great community leader. And those are two among many volunteers that really make this happen. Mm -hmm. um, it is challenging at times because you have people who are talking about very important issues that they're very mm -hmm. passionate about, and they've all been working on a lot of different ways of getting at those. Uh, at the same time, we found there's a real hunger to work together and to really move the needle on some of these outcomes. Mm -hmm. That's really where Strive Together came in for us. Okay. Uh, they are a national education collective impact movement. Okay. They started in Cincinnati, just in that one community, had tremendous success there, and then became a model that others can use. So they came in to Central Alabama at our invitation mm -hmm. and helped provide uh, training and group facilitation so that we could identify those uh, common, the common agenda we wanted to have for education in particular and mm -hmm. the common ways we would measure our success and a way to build a governance structure of some sort that would mm -hmm. hold this all together for the long term. Right. I think that, that sustainability is so important. I think that, um, I know I, I get excited about projects. I'll start on my own and then, gosh, it's hard to sustain them, uh, but, but there's a lot at stake. And I think that uh, that's what initially excited me about the project was there's some real structure to this project, mm -hmm. so it isn't just going to, you know, fire up and then go away. Mm -hmm. um, and with United Way at the head, uh, being the backbone mm -hmm. organization, you know, it's a very strong United Way. We're one of the, uh, United Way of Central Alabama, I think is one of the more successful United Ways across the country. Um, strong leadership there. And mm -hmm. Birmingham and the, and the surrounding area, we have a good history of wanting to make an impact. Um, it's just getting there is sometimes hard. Mm -hmm. Tell me this, um, we're, we're going to take a break in just a moment, but I want to know, tell me the area that Bold Goals, what, who is in the Bold Goals Coalition of, of Central Alabama? We have a five county footprint, okay. which is Jefferson, Blunt, Shelby, Walker, and St. Clair counties. Okay. And we have more than 200 organizations now in that footprint that are working together. Wow, that's impressive. Um, okay, well on that note, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back. Welcome back. Um, my name is Tricia Powell Crane. You are watching the Get Connected segment on the Alabama Way. And we have with us this morning Dan Stevens, who is the Vice President of Community Impact and Education, um, working with the Bold Goals Coalition of Central Alabama for the United Way. That's right. I think I said that yeah. right. Um, in the first segment, Dan was kind enough to talk with us about 
um, what collective impact is and what bold goals mm -hmm. is. And it's really kind of a movement. I mm -hmm. kind of look at it as a movement mm -hmm. of trying to get people all the ship pointed in one direction, maybe two or three, but around education, trying to um, find some uh, common a common agenda, mm -hmm. right? To say this is where we want to do this work. This is where we can make the biggest impact mm -hmm. collectively. Like, if I got That's that a, kind of kind of close, um, I appreciate that. I am very interested in this because I, I think that. Uh, I've always held the belief that communities have to do their own work. Sure. Uh, they can't look to others to solve their problems, mm -hmm. right? And we do our best work when we're working in our own communities. Sure. So with that said, um, I know another, uh, the big part of, you know, how does Bold Goals get its work done is through the action networks. But before we do that, I just remembered, I wanted to ask you, what size, we talked, this is a five county mm -hmm. area. How many people are in this area? How many, how many folks are we hoping to collectively impact? There are approximately 160,000 students in K through 12 in that five county area. Okay. Um, and there are about 22 school systems in oh. that same footprint. So it's quite extensive, the oh area we gosh. serve. Mm -hmm. 22 school systems. Yeah, mm -hmm. Jefferson County is one of those that has an awful lot of school systems, um, mm -hmm. people in their own communities. I know recently we had, um, there was a meeting that was held where all of the superintendents of those school systems were asked to come together. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that meeting a little bit. I know you got to attend that meeting. That mm -hmm. was a that was a high level thing um, to get the leaders mm -hmm. of school systems together to talk about collective impact and and getting sure. some of this work done. What was that like? It was very exciting and really encouraging mm -hmm. to see them willing to come together like mm -hmm. that. We had 17 of those 22 school systems represented mm -hmm. uh, by the superintendents and their representatives. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Tommy Bice, the state superintendent of mm -hmm. education, helped us convene that meeting. He's on the leadership council for the whole Bold Goals That's Coalition. Mm -hmm. Invited them there. Um, we were at the United Way building on behalf of Bold Goals and mm -hmm. brought the superintendents together for one, to make sure they knew what we were doing. Mm -hmm. uh, many of them have been involved all along but also to open the floor to them and let us hear from them. What are the real challenges you're seeing? Mm -hmm. How can the community better align to serve the students and the school system so that we're all working to achieve the same goals, uh, particularly those that are within Plan 2020 from the State Department of Education. Right, and Plan 2020 is the strategic plan for our 735,000 students mm -hmm. across okay. Alabama in K-12. There's some very specific measurements mm -hmm. there. And, and what is happening in Bold Goals does remind me of, I know Dr. Bice uh, is a big fan of wraparound services, sure. what we sort of, you know, uh, uh, talk about in the community to make sure that it's not just about academics, that there are hungry kids and there are kids that need um, mental health services, there are kids that need health services. There, something as simple as vision screening that might, m might or might not be available at mm -hmm. the school. And I think it, it's great that you got the superintendents who could really articulate their own needs. Um, I think one of the things I hear over and over again is often groups of people who are in need, someone will step in and say, here's what you need, without ever having asked them. So right. I, that's great that, that you ask them what they need. Um, and it's good that so many participated. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, um, it's tough. I, I keep going back to this, it's tough to coordinate. Just coordinating a meeting sometimes is very difficult. I know I've, I've done that many times. <laughs> But talk to me a little bit about the action networks, right? Because this is where the work really gets done. Right. So the action networks all eventually point back to our main goal for Bold Goals Education for the region, which okay. would be a graduation rate of at least 90% across okay. the region um, with every student prepared for college, career, and life. Okay. And so we've picked in our common measurement, our common agenda, a number of different metrics that lead up to that goal. And these are uh, metrics that have proven across the country to be very influential towards that goal. Hmm. Among those, we've narrowed it down to three that we're working on right now okay. with an action network around three particular goals on that pipeline that leads to students being ready for college, career, and life okay. and graduating on time. Right. Um, we're looking at early learning, so access for more children to high quality early learning, particularly first class pre-K in central Alabama. Okay, wait, stop sure. there. Let's talk about first class pre-K okay. because I don't know that we've ever had that discussion mm -hmm. here. Um, first class pre-K is a statewide program, mm -hmm. correct? And it is it uses um, grant money basically mm -hmm. to fund pre-kindergarten classrooms. And we're here, we're talking about four-year-olds, correct? Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, so this is access to that early learning, bringing it to more people? 
Right. Is that what we're... Right. It's a voluntary, high-quality early learning program okay. and it is delivered in a diverse group of ways. You mm -hmm. can have it in a public school as essentially an additional classroom where voluntarily four-year-olds can come um, mm -hmm. to get a better start before kindergarten. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also be in uh, church-based centers or private child care providers or nonprofit child care okay. providers as long as they meet the quality standards and come on board with the program. And they receive the grant funds and they also participate in evaluation and measurement and maintaining a very high level of quality, which is really important. Well, and that first class pre-K, I know, you know, we're recognized nationally every year uh, for having the top program. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the rankings have come out this year, but I know in previous years, but the, but the challenge has been that it only serves a small percentage mm -hmm. of students. So they've been trying to, what do they say, bring that to scale, um, you know, yeah. scale it up and get mm -hmm. more classrooms. And um, that's great. That, that's, a, that's, that's really good. Forgive me for keeping to interrupt you. No, that's good. Okay. That, there are about 20% of students, maybe just a little less, that have access. 20% of four-year-olds have access to first-class pre-K right now. So we are right at the top in quality, but in access, we have room to grow. Mm -hmm. And there's a plan at the state level to help continue moving forward with investing in that more each year so that eventually we do have full access. Right. Um, our work here is, we believe, going to be focused on helping more of the community-based centers apply for the grants and achieve that sustainable status as a great okay. high-quality option in the community. Wonderful, really mm -hmm. getting that kicked off. Right. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's one of the action mm -hmm. networks. All right. The next one will be the third grade reading action okay. network. And across our region, the average reading proficiency at the end of third grade is about 35 or 36 percent. Obviously, there's a lot of room for growth there. Mm -hmm. um, we would like to see by 2020 to get to 56 um, percent, okay. at least, of students who can read proficiently by okay. the end of third grade. Right now, our action is focused on improving attendance and really addressing chronic absences. Oh, okay. That's proven to be uh, extremely important for academic proficiency, um, especially for students who are from uh, low-income families or facing other challenges in addition to uh, just going to school every day. Right, right. Uh, and so we're focused in right now at Oliver Elementary School mm -hmm. and we're helping them analyze data and figure out which students are really struggling, which families with chronic attendance problems and how can we align providers in the community to deliver services for them that they need to resolve whatever challenges and barriers there are for them attending school regularly. Oh wow, yeah, mm -hmm. because that, that is a, a really big deal. Um, we, we tend to refer to children as truants mm -hmm. when they miss, you know, more than seven days, I think is the standard mm -hmm. that our state uses. And, you know, some school systems will even go so far as to file petitions with sure. the court. Um, but I, I, I love that we're focusing on elementary age students mm -hmm. because the habit of going to school, right, having college age students, right, mm -hmm. uh, children, sure. um, they need to stay in the habit of going to school, right, and it de does develop very mm -hmm. early. So, um, okay, so that's, that's good. And what is the third The action third network? action network is around post-secondary uh, retention and persistence. Okay. And right now we're looking at building a network to help more students the free application for federal student aid known as the FAFSA. FAFSA, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And by completing that form, students become eligible for student aid and they also have to renew that every year in post-secondary education right. to stay there. And so there are challenges in both of those areas. That's great. Mm -hmm. And go ahead, uh, I'm Well, sorry. one thing we've learned is that uh, students in the Birmingham City Schools if they apply through the FAFSA, most of them are eligible for at least $5,000 in Pell Grants. Those aren't loans, those are grants that right. really help reduce their college costs. That don't have to be repaid. That's very right. important. Mm -hmm. Right. And a very high percentage of students who complete the FAFSA end up enrolling in college the following fall. So we think that's a really important place for us to dig in and get started. That is amazing. I mean, that is some very specific, focused, targeted mm -hmm. efforts. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, I would like to talk about um, how do non what role do nonprofits and government agencies play in this? Because we're sort of filtering down the structure mm -hmm. of um, of how you get your work done. So, thank you, um, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Um, we're watching the Get Connected segment on the Alabama Way. My name is Tricia Powell Crane. I'm the Executive Director of the Alabama School Connection. And uh, I'm thrilled to have with us today Dan Stevens, who is the Vice President of Community Impact in Education okay. with the Bold Goals Coalition of the United Way. I guess uh, there are a lot of ways we could say that, right? <laughs> um, uh, Bold Goals is not uh, an employer, I guess we'd say. They really are, uh, you're, you're bringing people together, mm -hmm. right, towards this 
wonderful um, goal of collective impact on a community, mm -hmm. targeting in education, targeting those things that really matter that are going to move the needle. I think mm -hmm. I heard you say that earlier, moving the needle forward uh, where, where more children are seeing more success mm -hmm. in school and going on to be college and career ready, mm -hmm. right? That's, That's one of our... Um, one of the terms that I know y'all are mm -hmm. using that is, is fairly common now, uh, we want kids to be able to go off to college or start a new career upon mm -hmm. graduating high school, right? Um, and I know that we, we've been through a lot. We've talked a lot about, you know, the structure of bold goals. And in the uh, last segment, we talked about action networks. And they were together around three goals. Mm -hmm. And basically, it was sort of pre-K, K-12, specifically focused on third grade reading, mm -hmm. right? Because we know that's a very strong indicator of future success. Mm -hmm. And then the post-secondary um, uh, aspect, the after high school, of getting um, students to fill out the federal application for student aid. Mm -hmm. I call it the FAFSA. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not even sure I knew what those letters stand for, but uh, those are all great areas now. So you've got that, but the work of getting that done is not something that Dan Stevens does. No, no. <laughs> right. So you've got to have nonprofit and government agency partners in this, right, mm -hmm. to actually make this work. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. How do these nonprofits become mm -hmm. a part of the Bowl Goals mm -hmm. Coalition and what kind of work do they do? Well, one, part of the beauty of what this collective impact work is about through Bowl Goals is that you bring these cross-sector partners to the table. So you mm -hmm. do have business at the table and nonprofits and mm -hmm. government agencies and funders and public employees, school leaders, teachers, mm -hmm. um, and parents and students and families, they all have a place at the table. Right. For nonprofits in particular, there are some great ways that they can lead in this. An example in the third grade reading action network that's looking at attendance is that two organizations help convene that group through their staff. One okay. is the Literacy Council. Mm -hmm. And the other is the Birmingham Education Foundation. Mm -hmm. And so they've stepped up to take responsibility for that network and, as I said, devote some staff time to it. They help lead the meetings. Um, so that's one role that wow. nonprofits play. Um, but organizer. Also, organizer. As organizers, mm -hmm. as leaders mm -hmm. and conveners. But mm -hmm. also in any action network, different nonprofits bring different skills and assets to the table. And mm -hmm. so um, you bring what you have to the table and see where it connects with the particular issue we're working on. Mm -hmm. So right. um, an organization may not work directly on attendance, but they may work directly with students or with a school or with families. And so we bring in that agenda to what work they're already doing so that we magnify the effort that way. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay, interesting. So that way, so, so the nonprofits really, it isn't that they, it, it can be what they're doing mm -hmm as it contributes around this goal of third grade reading or attendance, mm -hmm. right? I mean, mm -hmm. at third grade reading, I, I should say that more clearly. It, we're, you're focusing in right now on attendance, mm -hmm. but because it impacts third grade reading, right? right? right. And so uh, I would imagine as time goes on, you'll use the measures to determine how far you're, you're, you're mm -hmm. getting and how far uh, you are reaching your success and then maybe goals will be modified and changed sure. and that sort of thing. Well, we use continuous improvement as one of the principles of our okay. work. So we're always looking at the data and adjusting based on that. If something works, we try to do more of it and improve it more. If something doesn't work, we try to find out why and change so that we get the result we want. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And those kinds of decisions are made in partnership with mm -hmm. um, your, your leaders Right, and mm -hmm. also the nonprofits that are part of the network. Mm -hmm. This is, it seems a little messy, you know, it's a little messy <laughs> work. Uh, I can't imagine getting a, a lot of folks at the table like that convened around a common agenda. It, I just it think can it's fascinating. be challenging. It can mm -hmm. be challenging. One of the great things about the use of data, though, is that it translates among all the different groups. So uh, businesses can look at the data and understand it, nonprofits right. can look at it and understand where we are, the schools can look at that same data, and we all work from that same platform. Funders can look at the data and have an understanding of it. Right. So it's really a translator for us, helps hold us together. That's great. I love data. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of my, um, I, I'm a true believer in information. And I know people say you can have numbers say whatever mm -hmm. you want. But when you're looking not at the interpretive report, but at the actual data, um, it's, it's, 
beauty is in the eye of the beholder, mm -hmm. right? We try to use data as a flashlight to show mm -hmm. us where to go and how mm -hmm. to correct our course and not to use it in a punitive way as a hammer right. to anyone. We want, right. really want to use it to hold our own selves as a community accountable to make sure we're moving in a productive direction. Well, and, and that brings me to this mm -hmm. next point, which is, you know, a lot of our audience is probably watching at this point and thinking, you know, how can I help? I mean, it's good to be, it's fun to be a part of, a, of, a, of an effort where you can see the direction and you know that it's sustainable, mm -hmm. um, and you know that it's going to uh, result in some real change in your community. So this is happening in communities all across mm -hmm. our, the five county mm -hmm. area. So I guess would a good way for um, someone who's watching who wanted to get involved maybe find one of these partner agencies and do some work there and, and maybe be specific when you go to the agency and say, hey, I saw y'all are a part of the Bold Goals Coalition. I'd like to be a part of that work. Um, is that a good way Absolutely. For I think that's connect? probably one of the best ways to interface with us. You can go to our website at boldgoals.org. Okay. And if you go there, you can see a list of the participating organizations. You can find one that best fits your skills and interests, connect with them. Mm -hmm. And if they're plugged into the coalition, there'll be a way for you to plug in that way. Wonderful, wonderful. Because I think that is um, something that a lot of folks watching, sometimes it's hard to know where do I, where can I plug in? How sure. can I help? Um, and as I said, I think we have a very helping and giving community. We do. We just have to know what to do, <laughs> right? Um, well, let me ask you, is there anything that you wanted to tell us about Bold Goals maybe that I haven't thought about or have we pretty much covered it all? I would encourage people again to go to boldgoals.org. You can see our work in education, financial stability, mm -hmm. and in health. You can see those participating organizations. You can get an idea of who is in the leadership of this mm -hmm. organization or this coalition. You can keep up to date with the latest news. You can find out when we're meeting. So I would really encourage people to go there and learn more. I appreciate that. That is a very um, robust website. You know, sometimes websites kind of look like informational brochures, but yours has, uh, the Bold Goals website has a lot of information. Mm -hmm. and, and it does, if, if you're interested in more than education, if you want to see the health and the mm -hmm. financial stability, um, that's a, they're doing some fabulous work too. Yes. Their action networks are underway and they're having regular meetings. They are. And, um, well, what, so what do we look for now? What's going to happen with Bold Goals in the, uh, uh, keep on keeping on? Just We're evolving quickly, and I think what you'll continue to see from us is bringing information to the community about where we are. Um, so we'll continue to publish data that mm -hmm. helps guide us forward, and we'll continue to take action that's guided by that data, and we'll share all of that with the public. Wonderful. That's, a, that's another one of my favorites is sharing information mm -hmm. with the public. So I really want to thank you for being here today. Um, we've been talking about, you and I have been talking about Bold Goals for a long time. Mm -hmm. This is your everyday work. Uh, mm -hmm. And I've wanted so badly to tell the rest of the world about Bold Goals. It's nice to see that, that it is evolving into a more public role where people can understand what's happening with Bold yeah. Goals. A lot of work has gone into it. It's been two years or so of planning mm -hmm. and structuring and um, finding willing participants and folks who are willing to step up and, and commit, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there's a commitment aspect to there this. There is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is great. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for being here today, Dan. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for joining us.